Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube, covering nimble storage, the power of predictive analytics. Now your hosts, Jeff Frick and Stu Miniman. Welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here. We're at the Nimble Storage Predictive Flash Launch in downtown San Francisco. We're wrapping up a full day of coverage. Had uh, customers on, partners on, some of the executives on from Nimble, but now we want to get to the really smart guys. So we had to go to the well. We, we pulled David Floyer out, co-founder and a CTO of Wikibon, and really our, our storage guru, Flash guru. So welcome, David. Thank you. What would you think of the announcements today? I thought it was a tremendous announcement. Uh, they, they put a lot into it. Um, they took the decision to make it part of their overall uh, flash uh, hybrid uh, system, all of, the, all of the background services, data services they had before. And they have really positioned it extremely well going forward to take advantage of, of 3D NAND, which is is going to accelerate the decrease, uh, increase in density and the decrease in price over the next uh, three or four years. So they're well positioned on a price basis, they're well positioned on a scale out basis, so congratulations to them. It's interesting, Sharesh said, you know, there was some pressure to be kind of a me too all flash a couple right. of years ago and they, mm. they started on this journey and they decided not to do that and kind of, I'm sure there was a lot of pressure to come out with Flash, but you think uh, you think the wait was worthwhile for what they're really able to deliver today? If they had delivered a Me Too Flash and a storage array as a standalone, I'm sure they would have had some success with it. But long term, providing the data services around it, allowing it to integrate into the uh, uh, processes within the data center will give them a much stronger growth path into the future. Yeah. So, David, you, you've been highlighting the 3D NAND capabilities that mm. they've uh, put into the, this solution. You know, how long will it take the other players here to, to, to integrate that? You know, is that you know com a completely rewriting the software? Or is it just a few minor tweaks there? <laughs> that you know, Nimble came out blazing guns and said, you know, here's this Extreme IO, here's yeah. pure storage, and here's how you know we're going to beat them in scalability and IOPS. So you know, storage has tended to be a leapfrogging business. When do the other guys leap? That, that's an extremely good question because it isn't that simple. Um, you have a lot of things based on, if you choose an SSD path, and there's more than one path of doing this, if you choose an SSD path, you have to balance uh, a lot of design criteria uh, to that particular uh, technology, the SSD technology. So it, it will not be just a slotted in for anybody else who's using SSDs. Uh, there are obviously, if you're using uh, the, uh, the faster um, uh, ways of attaching storage uh, or flash, then, th then they will go their own direction. But for 3D NAND on SSDs, they certainly have a lead. It will take others' time to catch up with that. Uh, and of course, as you know, 3D NAND is, is you know, vertical. So they can add more and more and more of these layers on top of 3D. So the density is going to grow extremely quickly. And, and their emphasis on metadata to manage that amount of data is very interesting. And that's going to be, uh, for them, put them in a good position. That's not to say others won't respond, they will of course, but they certainly are in a good position for a relatively small company, relatively uh, early on in the game, to be well positioned for that growth. Yeah, so with this announcement, you know, David, you, you've looked at all the players, you've been watching Flash, you know, for quite some time. You know, show us the, the horses on the, on the track, you know, how does Nimble stack up? Well, <coughs> The, uh, the horses, there are horses on the track and then there are horses which are preparing to be on the track. I think there are two, uh, two groups. So the horses on the track, Stream IO, very well uh, architected box, very strong in the scale out portion of it. Uh, you've, uh, that's obviously a very good competitor and that's going to grow and that's got the whole might of EMC behind it. So they have to be a strong horse. You've also got other uh, technologies. Uh, um, uh, NetApp have just bought uh, SolidFire, a very, very nice scale out architecture, not quite as scale out, it's uh, more adding on things uh, slightly more separately, but again, a very good architecture. Um, 
uh, and then you, you've got those are the two major ones which are in the in the business at the moment. The ones that are very interesting are the manufacturers themselves, the Samsungs, uh, the, the SanDisks. What, uh, what I would be surprised if some of those don't, don't start, or they have done, started to put in uh, their own technologies into the, into the mix. Um, I, I've, I've forgotten HP, of course. They are, they've got an excellent uh, uh, technology they've brought with the All Flash Array. Hitachi also have one. IBM have, have focused more on the high-end, high-performance side of things. Uh, violin are there. But, but the, I think the interesting new people on the track will be the Sandis, the Samsungs, the Microns of the world coming into it from a different angle and able to uh, take a much larger amount of flash and balance across it. That's going to be an interesting With massive entry into resources, market. massive distributions, yes, and vertically integrated. Yeah, a lot of capital. yeah very mm -hmm. different. I mean, it's, very different one of those guys yeah. are, are components inside of many of the components. You mentioned Micron. Exactly. I mean, yeah. Micron's components inside the latest, you know, HP That's converged right. solution that they yeah. have. So, right. uh, you know, interesting. Uh, David uh, Suresh made a made a good observation. I thought he said uh, that in the last two years we've seen more share shift in storage than we saw in the last oh. ten years. Unbelievable. So, yeah. you know, What's happening? Give, us, give us your viewpoint as to, you know, the storage industry. I mean, we've seen, you know, massive acquisitions like Dell buying EMC, you know, HP and IBM have gone through major changes. Um, I mean, when we go five years from now, um, is it going to be a different landscape? Because for, for the longest times, it's, you know, you can always name the top four or five guys. Right. Um, but it's, right. it's, there's shakeups. There's, there's two, two shakeups on two dimensions. The first is the move. Uh, from uh, disk-based uh, storage to flash-based storage. And, and that is, as, uh, has happened very, very uh, consistently over the last few years. If you look at the percentage, there's a chart, I believe, there. That if you look at the percentage... Go to the chart? Yes, Thunder sure. The chart. Go to the chart, guys. Thank um, you. If you look at the percentage of... Uh, spend on flash in the what we call the latency storage that's below one millisecond uh, at that we're expecting that at the end of 2016 soon into 2017 to be 50 percent to have crossed over the 50 percent mark so that's a big change indeed so it really means the end of all of the uh, high performance disks at all. So all that's left of disk will be the high capacity disks. Now the high capacity side won't break over until much later in the 2019 sort of time scale. But the high performance stuff, the people who really want to pay extra for their storage, this has mean, mean, meant a great deal. So, that's, uh, that speed of that adoption was caught, what is what caught a lot of people hugely by surprise. Uh, NetApp, uh, you, you're seeing uh, them suffer in, in, in the marketplace. Uh, EMC in the VMAX has equally had uh, troubles in that area, though, though the extreme IO has been very strong. So what are the drivers? The drivers, it's new application performance standards. I mean, what are some of the things that are driving that, the, that, that the adoption? acceleration of that yes. adoption? I mean, obviously, uh, things like inline compression, inline deduplication have brought down the cost. The simplicity of managing flash. Everybody who puts in an all flash array suddenly says, I don't need to do anything with it. You know, it works. It just works. It just works. I put my application on it and all the problems I used to have, I don't need to deal with. So the cost of managing it uh, goes down very, very strongly indeed. Um, and then there's a third area which is very interesting, and that is that you can use snapshots, and instead of just having, on, uh, having to copy data on disk, you can share that data and you can share it across a whole large number of people. So your time to data, time to use data, goes from being weeks to being days, hours, even minutes. So it's a much, much faster time to data across the organization as a whole. And as that last piece starts to really bite, as people have to change their ways of procedures, or ways of handling storage, that is, the, in my view, the biggest difference it's going to make to 
the value of the computing that Flash store, uh, is supporting. Now, that doesn't matter so much on capacity stuff, but on the low latency, it's very, very important, and that's going to make a complete change in the way that, flat, that storage is managed within data centers. You're going to have seven, eight times as much uh, uh, data held on the flash as you could on disk. So, David, one of the, the real focuses here, you know, beyond th there's the all flash array announcement, but uh, the InfoSight solution mm. uh, that they've got mm. the software, it's really a SaaS based service, um, but the way uh, Nimble position it is they automate the intelligence for your operations. And you know, at Wikibon, David, we, we've done the true private cloud research, right. talking about how yeah. do we really you know, simplify operations. How, how's Nimble fitting into that discussion? You know, are, are they part of the discussion, kind of you know, out, out on the edges of it? You know, how, how do they fit into the broader discussion of you know, simplifying IT and delivering cloud right. solutions? <clears throat> so they are a solution for that part of it, which is the storage, mainly the storage part. Though, as they showed, in the, uh, in the announcement today, they can go into other areas of it as well. Um, it, when you look at true private cloud, this, the secret of it is going to be to integrate the, the, the storage and the server and the network all together. This is an extremely positive contribution to the storage. And I believe they're going to be using this in true private clouds as an OEM, if you like, provider to it. So they can be a very, very strong provider of a storage, net, of a storage capability into a true private cloud. So uh, it won't be them necessarily as the provider to the end user, but they'll pr be providing it to people who want to put true private clouds together. All right, that's a wrap. Good summary, thank you, David. You're very welcome. Stu, love spending a day with you again, as always. Yeah, re really good stuff here, uh, Jeff. You know, it's great to be in San Francisco. Uh, you know, but lovely facility here, uh, too. And uh, yes, yeah, so, there's so much going on in the industry, and uh, the Cube's covering all of it. Yeah, and Nimble Storage not only made Escape Velocity, they escaped, they're public, and, and now everybody can watch their revenue grow, and uh, Suresh and the team really seem to be on to something exciting. So. Uh, thanks for watching the Cube. We keep going out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. We are busy into the spring season. Take a look at siliconangle.tv on upcoming. You'll see where we're going to be over the next several weeks and several months. Also, check out Women in Tech of the Week, our Guest of the Week, our special features, as well as now we have podcasts, Cubecasts, of course we call them, on iTunes and SoundCloud. So if you didn't get a chance to watch David live, you don't have time, check it out in your car while you're taking a jog or walk around the park. I'm Jeff Frick, signing off here from the Nimble Storage Predictive Flash Launch event. You're watching theCUBE, we'll catch you next time. See you later.